Beginning January 2018, Ken Bostrom Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. Welcome back to another broadcast with Ken Bostrom Ministries. We thank you for being with, and I really want to thank our, our partners of Ken Bostrom Ministries for making it possible for us to, to go around the world with the, with the message, with the teachings that we do. And so uh, a great shout out to all of you, and, and Happy New Year. This is my first day of recording uh, for the new year. And uh, I... I'm finishing the tribes of Israel. We're not done yet because we have 12 sons of Israel, uh, Jacob, who was also called Israel. And then he adopted two sons, J uh, Joseph's two sons. So basically there's 14 tribes altogether that we're talking about. So today we're, uh, you know, Chuck Pierce had the School of Prophets. And I, I can't remember, I think that was like 2013 I took that School of Prophets. And he said, uh, that the tribes, uh, understanding the tribes is not just head knowledge, but for us to see the significance of the tribe that we are grafted into, how it applies to us today. The Greek mindset sees everything in the natural and head knowledge, but the Hebraic mi mindset sees things from a time frame where history continually repeats itself. And so we need to understand what God is doing with the tribes and how to intervene to fill, fulfill their destiny, their relationships and covenants. Now, a lot of people get frustrated because they said, well, I don't understand what tribe I'm in. You know, a lot of times the, 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 the ministry gifts that are talked about, uh, the, the uh, apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor and teacher, they will fall into one of those, uh, one of the, uh, the tribes. There's a lot of people that will fall into a tribe. And if God hasn't shown you, maybe it's not on a need to know basis at that point. Maybe it has to do with uh, you just getting grounded in the word. And then when you start ministering, it's just going to be natural and you're going to fall into the gifting and the, the uh, prophetic words of some of these tribes. Now, there's four, one father, his name was Jacob, and when he wrestled with God, his name was changed to Israel. And so, in the Bible, when it says Jacob, it's talking about the unbelieving or the rebellious Jews, and when it's talking about Israel, it's talking to the believing and the obedient Jews. And so, a lot of times, it's used interchangeably that way. But Jacob... Uh, when he was Jacob, he had 11 sons. And when he was Israel, he had one son that was Benjamin after, after he became uh, Jake Israel. I'm, I, I'm, I would love to be teaching on Benjamin today because that's such a fun one. But let's get back to the four mothers. You know, there was one father, but there were four mothers. Leah, her name means tired, exhausted, the one who is making an effort in vain, a wild cow. You know, she was the one that's, that wasn't beautiful. She was not loved by Jacob. She was put in there by her father, tricked in. You know, Jacob was a trickster, but he met his match when he met Laban. And Rachel was the one that Jacob loved. It's the one that he worked seven years for, and he ended up working another seven years just for Rachel. Her, her name means mother sheep, sheep, mother of the sheep. Bilhah, who was a handmaid of Rachel, was exactly the same. They both had this very same birthday. And uh, her name means fear, dread of God, timidity, modesty, and tenderness. Zilpha was a handmaid of Leah. And she was, a, uh, uh, Bilhah and Zilpha were, uh, were sisters. And her name means drop, tear, closeness, intimacy, or wet with myrrh. Now, why they were named that, I don't know. But that's what their name means. Now, the order of the birth, Leah had six sons. Bilhah, who um, was, it was Rachel's uh, handmaid, had two sons, Dan and Naphtali. Zilpha, who was the handmaid of Leah, had Gad and Asher. And then Rachel had Joseph and Benjamin. So today we're going to be on the ninth on, on the ninth son, his name is Issachar. This is my very favorite tribe because prophetically I have been prophesied 
that I have the anointing of Issachar on, on my teaching, on my teaching gift. And um, the Lord spoke to me when I taught this back, and I'm trying to think of how long ago it's been since I've taught uh, the tribes. I went from town to town, and Bible study to Bible study teaching this. I was, you know, every, you know, all over teaching this. And it was so much fun. This is the fifth son of Leah. It's the ninth son of, of Jacob. Five is a grace and mercy. And nine stands for the gifts of the spirit. And so his name means he will bring a reward. Now this comes into, Reuben comes into play on this. Because Reuben was Leah's firstborn son. He was very he was very much a mama's boy. He was very close to his mom. He would be defending his mom at all costs. And so it starts in Genesis 30, 14. Now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest. Now wheat harvest is Pentecost season, and found mandrakes in a field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your some of your son's mandrakes. Now mandrakes may not seem like much to you, but uh, mandrakes in Hebrew is dudanes, and it means a love apple. So let's look at mandrakes. You know, uh, I could have put a different picture of Aphrodite on here, but she would be in the nude, and I was not going to be showing that nude picture. And so we just have the head of Aphrodite here, uh, and her she's called the Lady of the Mandrake, Aphrodite. It was a god. It was an ancient Greek goddess associated with love and beauty, pleasure, passion, and procreation associated with the planet Venus. Uh, now, if you've heard the word uh, aphrodisiac, it's a food or a drink or a drug that stimulates sexual uh, desire. There's a lot of times when, when, peop when a, a man will spike a woman's drink with an aphrodisiac to make her want to have a sex with him so that it's a mutual consent kind of thing. Well, it's not a mutual consent if you are drugged with an aphrodisiac, but that's where it came from. It came from the mandrake, and the mandrake would be, uh, would be like that, where it would cause you to uh, ha want to have sexual desires. And here uh, we go back. I'm going to go back when Rachel said, please give me... Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. And Leah said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Because she was married to, to Jacob first. She, even if she was tricked, they went through the marriage ceremony. They went through the seven, week, seven days of their marriage week. And, um, and so, but Jacob didn't, he slept with Rachel. He didn't want to sleep. Every time he slept with Leah, she got pregnant. But when he slept with Rachel, nothing happened except it pleased him. And so, uh, is it a small matter that you took away my husband? Will you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, therefore, he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrake. Rachel gave Leah permission to sleep with her own husband. How about that? You need permission from from, from the loved wife to sleep with the, the, um, the husband. And here, um, and so verse 16, when Jacob came out to the field that evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, you must come in me. You must come in me, which means you must have sex with me. You must come in with me, for I surely hired you for, with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. She said, you must. And an and amplified version says, I paid your hire. I hired my own husband to sleep with me. See, that's the way Leah was. She was so unloved that she had to hire, she had to bargain with her sister. In the Message Bible, it says, I bartered my son's mandrakes for a night with you. All of those mean the same thing. She bought and paid for a night with her own husband. That's how unloved she was. And, and God listened to Leah. God listened to Leah. And, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. And Leah said, God has given me my wages because he has given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar, which means 
Issachar means to rise up. It, the root word is Nasa, which is kind of interesting. So she called his name Issachar, uh, the root word to lift up, to advance, to arise, to carry off. The word actually means reward, but the root word of Issachar. Now I'm going to read to you uh, something from um, a page from Gwen Shaw. Gwen Shaw of the end, end Time Handmaidens, she's with the Lord now, but she's the one that said that the tribes of Israel was the most needed teachings in the end times. And you don't hear very many people talk about it, except like Chuck Pierce. Chuck Pierce, he, when he started following the tribes and started following the months, he still loves Jesus. He still knows that Jesus is his Savior, his Lord, his Redeemer. But understanding the times, you have to start understanding the Jewish because we're going to go back into the Jewish times um, in the end times. Now, here it says... Uh, was the name of National Aeronautics and Space Administration chosen for its acronym NASA would be the Hebrew root word? If it's not intentional, it must be a, a strange coincidence. She said, uh, as she was talking, thinking about how Issachar and NASA uh, are so combined, she said, uh, I've seen movies of our spacemen as they float around inside their space capsule like a combination of bird and fish. And I'm thrilled and wept at the revelation of every n human is a natural, God-given desire to fly, to be lifted up, to rise up, to go up high, high, just like NASA. I see NASA this longing not to only lift up the burden and carry it, but to himself be lifted up in the presence of God. And she said, Issachars are natural pilots. Certainly one, one reason that the Issachar makes good pilots is because they are careful, deliberate, cautious, and not easily excited or disturbed. They keep cool under pressure, especially when they are in lofty high places. I thought that was kind of interesting. She, she had so much insight into the tribes. Uh, her three ring binder is that thick. <laughs> you know, you have, to, you have to have some patience with that. First Chronicles 12:32. It says here that the sons of Issachar, who had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the voice says of Issachar, they were politically savvy men. Oh my goodness, couldn't we use some, some sons of Issachar on the Congress right now of the United States of America? Oh my goodness, they were politically savvy men. The New Living Testament says all these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. Issachar was gifted with discerning God's perfect timing. You know, learning God's timing isn't something that is easy to learn. You have to have an understanding of the heavens because back then you had the understanding of the timing of heavens. And um, it takes a great discipline to get into this because it's, it's you know, if, if you're one of these people that's good, a uh, good astronaut or good at NASA or something, you are brilliant. But this has to be a gift. This has to be a gift. You know, one thing, we cannot get a, ahead of God's timing, and we can't get behind God's timing. We want to be in the perfect timing of the Lord. And um, so understanding the times, understanding the times starts back, way back in Genesis 1.14. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament for the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, that's oat, that means a signal, a warning, uh, uh, like, it's like a billboard. God is the original billboard advertisers in the heavens. And um, let them be for seasons, and that word there is moedim, it means a fixed appointed time on God's calendar, on God's calendar. All of the moeds, another word for moab, moed seasons would be feast. When you get into Leviticus, Leviticus 23 talks about the feast of the Lord, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, um, feast of trumpets, day of atonement, tabernacles. Those are all fixed appointed time on God's prophetic calendar. 
And, you know, the first four have prophetically been, they have actually been fulfilled. Not, they prophesied about them way back since uh, Genesis or Exodus chapter 12. But they have been fulfilled. Jesus, on the day and the hour, he became the Passover lamb. On the day and the hour, he, he, he was the first uh, feast of unleavened bread. He who knew no sin became sin for us. And he went to hell for us. He, that was a feast of unleavened bread. And then he was the first raised from the dead on the very day and the very hour. Then we come to Acts chapter 2. And the very day and the hour the, when, when Pentecost had fully come to pass, when the feast of Pentecost had fully come to pass, the Holy Spirit came. That's when the church began. Those four have been fulfilled. And so we're still rehearsing the last three. We're still rehearsing the, the fixed appointed time on God's calendar for the Feast of Trumpets. Everything that's talked about in the New Testament are ab about the catching away of the saints is wording from the Feast of Trumpets and the, the Day of Atonement, the Tabernacles. And so those are, they, that you're understanding that from the signs in the heavens. Um, days would be yam. That would be a division uh, of, of time or year. Years, Shana, and that is a, a measure of time indication. Uh, the days could be holy days. They could be specific uh, memorial days, uh, specific fast days, specific feast days. Uh, years, that would have to do with a jubilee year, a, a jubilee year when, um, when you would get everything back. Every, you know, your children, you would get your possessions, you would get your land back. That jubilee year is very, very important. Um, it could be a leap year. You know, see, the, the uh, tribe of Issachar had an understanding of the heavenly. They knew the mathematical pattern because seven times in 19 years, they would have a leap year. Now, every four years, you can look at it every year that we have a presidential election, we have a leap year on a Gregorian calendar. And they add one day to, to February, so it'd be February 29th. So this year, we have a leap year. Uh, but when, when, the, um, when the Hebraic calendar, God's calendar, when that has a leap year, they add an entire month. They had, so they have 13 months instead of 12 months. And if, the, if the, the tribe of Israel had an understanding that they would be able to tell the Jews when to go to Israel for Passover because God mandated it that every man over 30 years old or every son of the covenant that had been through Bar Mitzvah was, had to be, go to, Israel, to Jerusalem to the city of Jerusalem, no matter where they lived. They had to go there for Passover season, for, for Pentecost season, and for Tabernacle season. And so if the tribe of Issachar wasn't there, they would be there on the wrong month. How would you like to wait, 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 wait for an important uh, meeting to, about your inheritance or, or a special, uh, specialist for some sickness you're going through, something you needed help with? And, and you're at, there at the wrong day, the wrong time, the wrong hour. That's, that's how serious it was. Issachar had an understanding. They knew the mathematical understanding of, of the leap year. So they knew exactly when Israel was supposed to go to, um, to Jerusalem. Uh, one of the things, uh, every, every tribe has got uh, a symbol. His was a symbol of a hum humble donkey. His, his, uh, his birthstone or stone that would be on the breastplate of the high priest would be the amethyst. His month would be Iyar. That would be the second month of months uh, following Judah. His strength. He had understanding of God's timing. He was a great teacher. He was a humble servant. He had backbone. He had courage. He was strong physically and spiritually, and he was called a burden bearer. Let me see. His weakness, his weakness is he was an introvert. He really did not like to be around people. He really just liked to, uh, to be with 
um, with the Lord. And, and so here's a prophecy from Jacob. Issachar is a strong donkey laying down between two burdens. He saw the rest was good and that the land was present, pleasant. He bowed his shoulder to bear the burden and began, became a band of slaves. Issachar was one of the main teachers in Israel. Uh, Deuteronomy 33, 18. And of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and your Issachar in your tents. Now, you're going to find out next. the next teaching is going to be on Zebulun. Zebulun and Issachar were together. They were uh, both the, the last children of, of Leah. And when Moses prophesied to uh, Issachar, he also prophesied to Zebulun. The reason that Zebulun was first Zebulun was a businessman. He, his month is, is money-making business. He, he, was, he was a great soul winner. He was a great missionary, but he was a great money-maker. And if it wasn't for Zebulun, Issachar wouldn't be able to do the, the ministry that he was supposed to do because uh, Zebulun provided, provided uh, the financial support so that uh, otherwise the ministry of Issachar couldn't take place. They shall call the peoples to the mountain. That's what I was talking about. They shall call the people to, Mount, to Jerusalem at the appointed time of the feast. And they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall partake in the abundance of the seas. The seas there mean the people and treasures hidden in the sand. The treasures that would be hidden in the sand that they both enjoyed was the oil reserves, great oil reserves. Um, and here the position, the position of in the promised land, you can see here uh, in the red area there, um, it's south of Zebulun on the north and Jordan River located on the east. It was right there in the heart. If you, if you know where the Sea of Galilee is, it's right below the Sea of Galilee. And in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, uh, they will be positioned between Simeon and Zebulun. That's already been, I mean, they're not going to have to draw straws of where they're going to be because it was prophesied way back that that is going to be the position uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. You know, the tribes are important in an understanding of where we are in history, where we are prophetically. And the tribe of Issachar has an understanding of the time. You know, Robert Heidler from uh, Glory as I Am, when he brings out every single month or head of the year, we just had a head of the year, head of the month. And, and when, when, um, when he brings out the understanding of the tribe of that season, of that, uh, of, of that month, it makes so much sense. All of a sudden, you just kind of fall into place. It's like, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, and it seems like where is that piece that's missing? Because you just feel like you're just n it's not done yet. But when you get all the pieces into place, you can see the whole picture. You know, some people think we don't have to have anything to do with the Old Testament anymore. I totally disagree. You know, Jesus said that everything in the Old Testament taught taught about him it taught about him and so we need to have an understanding of the old testament we are not under the curse of the law we don't have to live by the law we're under grace we're under a period of grace we've had two thousand years of, of of the wonderful grace of our lord and Je savior jesus christ and so we we are in the church age but we have to understand that when uh, Kenneth Hagin said that when, uh, right before the tribulation comes and the catching up of the saints, there's going to be a period where you're going to feel like you're already in the tribulation because it's an exchange of the two, uh, the two dispensations are coming together. One is leaving, the other one is coming in. And the, in, in, hi in history, there's never been so much understanding uh, about the things that we're talking about now, the seasons, the, the Jewish roots. And that's where the tribes of Israel come from. It, it comes from understanding the seasons of the Lord. And this is why we're talking about this, that anyone from the tribe of Issachar, I believe that definitely that, um, that Chuck Pierce is 
has an anointing of the tribe of Issachar because he under he can prophesy into it, tell us what to do, uh, tell us what's happening, prophesy into the times. So I hope I didn't confuse you. I hope I helped you to understand that this is for us today. God bless you. Have a great day. This is Ken and Mary Bostrom. We thank you for joining us today. We welcome you to watch us on KBNTV.TV, YouTube, Facebook, mboston2.com. Also listen to us on WRNO Shortwave Radio. Contact us at kenbostonministries.org. God bless you today.